हरे हरे इज वन इज गुरु प्रसाद स्वामी महाराज जी की जाए सो वी आर सो वेरी फॉर्चुनेट टू हैव अ ग्लोरियस डिसाइपल ऑफ श्री प्रभुपाद एंड इनिशियटिंग स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर and an amazing preacher especially in latin american countries and many other places so we are really very blessed to have maharaj association today at iskon dwarka so maharaj whenever you come to delhi there by default there is invitation please do come to iskon dwarka and keep blessing us maharaj thank you thank you thank you his one is guru prasad swami maharaj ji ki jai radha madava kunja bihari jay radha madava kunja bihari गोपी जन वल्लभा गिरे वारदारी आय गोपी जन वल्लभा गिरे वारदारी ಯಶೋಡನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶೋಡನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಾಮುನಚೀರ ಪಾನಚಾರಿ यमुना तीर वन चारे राध माधव कुंज बिहारे जय राध माधवा कुंज बिहारे गोपी जन वल्लभा गिरे वर दारे गोपी जन वल्लभा गिरे वर दारे यशोडनंदन भज जन रंजन यशोडनंदन भज जन रंजन यमुना चीरावन चारे यमुना चीरावन चारे जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारे श्री कृष्ण जय दंध्या प्रभु नित्यनंद श्रिया द्वैत गदाधा शिवा हरि गौरा भक्त बिंद
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Gora Hari Bo. Jai Jai Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Prabhu Pan, Jai Prabhu Pan. Bar for a month of Privaja Kachari Ashto, Taris, Sisi, Mad, Bayachar, and other men, the Bakti Vedantas from him, Haraj, Shira Pavapad, King, Jai Nita Lila Provisto, Vishnu Padasto, Taris, Sisi, Mad, Shira Bakti Sidanta Sarasati Gosami, Harata, Kur Pavapad, Ki, Ananta Koti, Vaisnava Vindiki, Grantaraj, Shimad Bhagavatam, Ki, Tai Gor Pemanandi, Glory to the Assembly Votis, all Glory to the Assembly Votis, all. Glory to the assembled devotees. Glory to Shri Guru, Shri Gaurang. Hare Krishna. It's a pleasure to be here again in Dwarka Dham and see the temple gradually coming up. Oh, such a big, beautiful temple. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So today because uh, we're on the eve of Ram Navami so I wanted to speak um, on some of these verses, glorifying Hanumanji, glorifying Lord Ramachandra. <coughs> so the, this first verse, I'm just going to chant it because this is not, not repeatable, not something we can just, you know, rhythmically uh, repeat. Om Namo Bhagavate Uttama Shlokaya Nama Aya Lakshana Shila Bhattaya Nama Upashikshitatmana Upasita Lokaya Nama Sadhu Bhada Nikasanaya 
नमो ब्रह्मण्य देवाय महापुरुषाय महाध्वजाय नमते नमईति Translation by Śrīla Prabhupāda Let me please your lordship by chanting the Bij Mantra Omkara. I wish to offer my respectful obeisances under the personality of Godhead, who is the best among the most highly elevated personalities. Your lordship is the reservoir of all good quality, <coughs> qualities of Aryans people who are advanced. Your character and behavior, behavior are always consistent and you always control your senses and mind. Acting just like an ordinary human being, you exhibit exemplary character to teach others how to behave. There is a touchstone that can be used to examine the quality of gold, but you are like a touchstone that can verify all good qualities. You are worshipped by the Brahmins, who are the foremost of all devotees. You, the Supreme Person, are the King of Kings, and therefore I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gananjana Sharakaya Chakshuru Militam Yenatas Mai Sri Gurave Namaha Vichetanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Buddha Le Swayam Pakada Mahyam Dadatishwa Patantika Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Buddha Le Simati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Bhastyatya Deshatarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So I'm going to read some of the other verses in this section but I wanted to start with this introduction. Uh, these are beautiful prayers um, by Hanuman, who is, uh, these prayers are being spoken in Kim Purusha, uh, Varsha. So we can see that Lord Ramachandra's fame is universal, uh, not just in this planet, but everywhere in the universe. And he's always being glorified. This is uh, just as in the 12th canto, uh, Shukadeva Goswami tells Pariksha Maharaj, he gives a whole list of the kings from his time up to uh, a certain time in Kali Yuga. And then he says, all these kings will be forgotten except for you because you're hearing the Bhagavatam. So, the Lord and his devotees are always glorious. No, Hanumanji, we see everywhere in India, Hanuman. No. And we see Ramachandra. Actually, Ramachandra is more popular than Krishna in India. Because he represents human. He's, he's human-like. People can identify with that. Ramachandra comes first. There are three appearances of the Lord who have, who actually have rasa, no. The, previ the previous ones, you don't see so much, you see some rasa with Bhamanadeva and Bali Maharaj, no. Uh, you don't see much, or you see some rasa with Prahlad Maharaj and Lord Nasinghadeva, no. Uh, you don't see much rasa with Matsya or Kurma, no, <laughs> with their devotees, no. Uh, but, so, but you see the full manifestation of rasa, just like in Vamana Dev, he had parents, but he left. He was just, he appeared and he left. Kapila Dev had parents, but his father left as soon as he was born. So really Ramachandra is the first appearance of the Lord in, in each yuga, 
who actually has mother and father and brothers, sons, wife, you know, all these things. So this is, and he appears first, and he appears in this particular form to establish dharma. Just like there's one verse in the 11th canto of the Bhagavatam, which is in glorification of Lord Chaitanya, but it also pertains to uh, Krishna and Ramachandra. You know? And Taktva uh, Sudustyaja Surapsita Raja Lakshmin. That, uh, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he gave up not only one Lakshmi, two Lakshmis, you know? uh, just to preach Krishna consciousness to give Krishna consciousness to others. And uh, Ramachandra also, he two times, he was, he was ready to leave the goddess of fortune, she just wouldn't leave him. No. He wanted to, he was concerned. The Lord is always concerned about the welfare of his devotees. No. And so he was concerned, I have soft lotus feet. It says his feet were so soft that, that they could barely withstand the palms of Sita Devi, which were very soft. So imagine how soft her lotus feet were. You know. So he was very concerned. But she wanted to go. You know, she's also a uh, daughter of a Kshatriya. You know, so she has Kshatriya nature. You know, that I'm not going to stay behind like some housewife. You know. I'm a Kshatriya lady. You know, I will go with my husband. So... Uh, so well, the point is that, but he demonstrated these uh, human-like, Srila Prabhupada in his, even though it's not mentioned directly in the verse, Srila Prabhupada interjects it because it comes in later verses, and it is one of the main aspects of Ramalila, that he has a very human-like, human-like characteristics. Uh, and the most important one, which is, uh, spoken about in, a, in an upcoming verse, which I'll get, get to in a minute. Um, but, Om Namo Bhagavate Uttama Shlokaya. I offer my obeisances to Uttama Shloka. No. The Lord, especially when the Lord has so much Leela, we have the Ramayana. No. So much Leela is there. So, therefore, there, there can be so much uttama shloka, you know, so much glorification. If the Lord performs functional pastimes, then, uh, yeah, there's always, he's always uttama shloka, but how many shlokas can you offer if there's no lila? You, know? <laughs> you can offer some shlokas, uh, glorifying his characteristics, his beauty, but when there is lila, then so much glorification take, can take place. So, uh, <clears throat> Arya Lakshana Shila Brataya. No. That he was very, very determined, no, Arya Shila, to show the characteristics in, in the 11th canto. It says, Dharmishta. No. He was very. Uh, very, very determined to establish dharma. You know. Right now we're living in a world which is becoming a dharmic. You know. and the Western world is so a dharmic. And now uh, India, some, you know, people, social media, thanks to social media, you know, people want to follow a dharma. This is the land of dharma. You know. uh, there's no other dharma anywhere else. Even in other religions, you find so many adharmic principles and the land of, of dharma. Therefore, <clears throat> by the arrangement of the Lord, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this dharmishta, his dharmishta, is that this Krishna consciousness movement has begun. But we have to make sure also that Krishna consciousness movement doesn't become a dharma. No. Otherwise, we can introduce some preaching tactics to attract people, but those are not eternal principles. Those are, you know, nirmitta principles just to bring people. You know, 
You bring people, Prabhupada said, by hook or crook, you know, especially in the West. But well, we don't need those adharmic uh, attracting principles right, here in Bharat Varsha. You know. We just have to preach Krishna consciousness, Bhagavad Gita. But even the other day, I was walking in the little park behind uh, <coughs> Shishi Radha Parthasarthi Mandir, the park in the back. And uh, so I was walking, I found one Bhagavad Gita. It was Monday morning, so somebody had dis distributed Bhagavad Gita to some guest, and you know, everybody in India knows Bhagavad Gita. You know, everybody, even the non non uh, Hindus know Bhagavad Gita. So this person was so much influenced, obviously by social media, television, all these things, advertising, trying to make some money off of a dharma, you know, and. He left the Bhagavad Gita, he, she left the Bhagavad Gita. No. So we cannot allow this to happen. No. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in his preaching in the ninth chapter of Adi Lila, he very strongly states that Bharata Bhumiti Hoyla, Manusha Janmajar, that anyone who is born, it takes human birth, in this land of Bharat Varsha, they have a special responsibility to be upakara. You know. They have to be very compassionate to all the living entities. Prabhupada even says that they should go out of India to preach. You know. Not everybody can go out of India, but some should go out. You know. and, but not go out like Srila Prabhupada said, one time he was preaching to a group of students in Harvard University in the U.S. He said, so, you have come here to learn from them, and I have come here to teach them. No. <laughs> so we don't go to learn, we go to teach. No. Uh, what can you learn? No. You can maybe learn a few things like put the trash in the trash can, no. <laughs> something like that. You can learn a few things. but. Otherwise, what are you going to learn in such places? No. Uh, no. Some, some skills maybe for your, uh, for your type of work that you're doing. But otherwise, everything else is teaching. No. And so, and here, we have to protect the land of Dharma by preaching very vigorously. Sankirtan, programs, festivals. No. When you do a festival in another country, yes, yeah, some people will come. You know. And they have ratiatras, most of the people that come are devotees. You know. But here, you do a festival and everybody comes. You know. and so, how, so we should be doing festivals. Prabhupada one time he said, even if we get, he was, he was in the US, he said, even if we get a million dollars in one day, next day we will spend it. Big festival. He said, then we will see what will Krishna give us in that, in that day. No. So this is our, this is, of course, you know, sometimes we have, obviously we have to save some Lakshmi for building a temple, for, you know. But basically, this is what it means to depend on Krishna. No. So, Srila Vrataya, Arya Lakshana, he showed all the principles, not of just an ordinary person, but the principles of an Aryan, no, Ramachandra. But he showed one thing, which was apparently, and this is the, uh, the subject matter of the next verse. Therefore, in the next verse, I'm just going to read the translation. The Lord whose pure form, Sachit Ananda Vigraha, is uncontaminated by the modes of nature. Here, Hanuman wants to make sure that someone doesn't think that this Arya, Arya Lakshana Shila means that Ramachandra is an ordinary person, is a jiva. Uncontaminated by the modes of material nature, can be perceived by pure consciousness. He cannot be perceived by ordinary vision. Just like many times I make the point, there are three kinds of eyes. We have these two eyes which are very inefficient. They, and, and they're very attracted to illusion. Even 
Bilbo Mangala Thakur. He thought, let me rid, get rid of these eyes. They're causing me so many problems. I was meditating on Krishna and then my eyes became attracted to Chintamani. But by Krishna's mercy, no, she actually became my Shiksha Guru. No. But my eyes, were, these eyes will deceive us. But Pashanti Janashak Shushaha. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, better than these eyes is Jnana Chakshu, the eyes of knowledge that we get from Bhagavad Gita, especially from the beginning of the Bhagavatam, all through the Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Rupa Goswami, Six Goswami. But even better, Premanjana Churita Bhakti Vilochane Na, the eye of the heart. So that eye comes from pure consciousness. In the Vedanta, he is described as being one without a second. Just like the Upanishads say, uh, <clears throat> uh, what is that verse? There is, no, there is no one equal and not even a good second. There is a good second, there's Balaram. You know, but he's also expand, expanding from Krishna. So, but no one can be a second to Krishna, to Ra Ramachandra. You know. Uh, what to speak of being equal. Because of his spiritual potency, he is untouched by the contamination of material nature. So Hanumanji is making this point again and again. He is not material, he has nothing to do with the material world. And because he is not subjected to material vision, he is known as transcendental. He has no material activities, nor has he a material form or name. Uh, so here, Hanuman is defeating the Mayavadis. Uh, he says he's without a name. Yes, he's without a material name, but he has a beautiful name, Ramachandra. Uh, uh, only in pure consciousness, Krishna consciousness, can one perceive the transcendental form of the Lord. Let us be firmly fixed at the lotus feet of Lord Ramachandra. And let us offer our respectful obeisances unto those lotus feet. Such a beautiful verse. Now, Srila Prabhupada in the purport, he quotes Brahma Samhita, Ramadi Murtishu. No. <coughs> Kala, what is it? Kala Niyam, Niyamena Tishtan. That there are many incarnations, Nanabhataram, but the Lord Brahma began with Rama, you know, the importance of Ramachandra. You know, and Nanavata Ram Akarod Bhuvaneshu Kintu, that uh, <clears throat> one, these, all these incarnations have unbelievable potency. You know, they all have the same potency, but they don't all have the same rasa. You know. Therefore, uh, Krishna Swayam Samabhat Paramapumam Yo. Krishna, he excels. He has qualities in, in the area of rasa that other Vishnu doesn't have. Even Balaram doesn't have. He has, Balaram has to some degree. Balaram plays a flute, but Balaram's flute will not attract all the gopis of Vrindavan and all the residents of Vrindavan. It will not fill the heart of Lord Brahma with Gayatri. Uh, and he has, he has extraordinary beauty, so does Balaram. But Krishna's beauty is beyond compare. And Krishna has unlimited uh, transcendental uh, devotees who are attracted to him. Uh, and so Krishna has special quality. But uh, Ramachandra is mentioned first. He came to establish Dharma, Dharmishta, Aryavachasa. He was very obedient to the order of his father. I've been making this point that even though uh, when Dasharath was forced, was forced by KK because he had promised her to, to uh, Blessings. And she said, later. 
very clever. Yoga Maya actually, at that time, she had no design on, but she did want her son to be king. But she was, but she was so attracted to Ram, everybody, even KK was so attracted to Ramachandra, she had forgotten about that until Mandara reminded her. Of course, Mandara was just thinking about self-preservation. I've got a good position. If she's the main queen and her son is the king, I will have very nice facility. You know. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada said, even though we may live in a palace, when Prabhupada was in Mayapur, living in his, his little hut, he said, this is the mode of goodness. And he pointed to the temple which was being built. That is the mode of passion. And Prabhupada said, even if we live in a palace, like some of our temples are palatial, you know, uh, we should be like Sudam Brahman. He had a palace, but he slept on the floor. You know. Krishna gave him a palace. So Krishna gives us, a, Prabhupada said, we can sleep in the palace or we can sleep under a tree. But our mentality is the same. Our mentality is to simply serve Krishna and be dasa dasa anudasa. No. That is our, that is our, that is what we want to do. So, here the emphasis is, you cannot see Krishna, or you cannot see Ramachandra, with ordinary eyes. You cannot see him with ordinary vision. No. Also the Upanishads say, nayam atma pravachanena labhyo. That, even if you attend very, uh, knowledgeable lectures or, or expositions of spiritual life, you will not be able to see Ramachandra. No. Or Namidaya, if you have great intelligence, Nabahuna Shutena, or if you read many, many books, you will still not be able to see. Yami Vaisha Binute Tena Labhas. Uh, these, 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 it will not, these, uh, he will not be revealed in this way. Tashaisha atma vivinute tanum swam. He will be revealed when you, when he wants to reveal himself to you. And when will that be? Yomai bhakta prayashati. When I have love. Krishna doesn't care what you offer. You can offer anything. Even if you offer the most opulent thing you can find. Even if you offer so much gold. Just like uh, this verse is uh, saying, the first verse, that uh, touchstone can prove the quality of gold. But Ramachandra is the touchstone who can uh, determine the quality of a devotee. If you can see him, and how do we see him? Lord Rama says a beautiful verse, that the vision of a devotee, ase shutekshita pato, no. That we see through our ears. That's how we see the Lord. No. That is the best way to see the Lord, through the ears. And what, what kind of a devotee does that? Tvam bhakti yoga paribhavita hritsaruja. No. One whose heart is totally purified by the performance of constant devotional service. That kind of a devotee can see the Lord. No. Uh, through, the, through, the, through our hearing. And then he will reveal himself. He's already revealed himself. Just see. No. Rukmini Dwarkadesh, Jagannath Balaji Subhadradevi, no. and Gornitai, and so many different wonderful. Uh, he comes, Sitaram, Lakshman, Hanuman, many of our temples. No. Uh, so many, so many uh, form the Lord is coming. And why does the Lord want to be in, in Delhi? The most polluted city in the world. No. He's, he's not coming. He has the best air in Goloka Vrindavan or in Ayodhya or in Vaikuntha. Why does he want to come? For our benefit. So that we can see him standing in the heat, standing in the cold. No. Uh, just like right now, even though they may have some fan or air conditioning, the heat will come and the Lord will be standing there. The winter will come, he will be standing in the cold. No. In South India, he's always standing in the heat. No. <laughs> so, no. He does this just, for, just so we can. So, 
How grateful should we be to the Lord who appears in this way? No. He knows that we can't see him so, so easily within the heart. But Srila Prabhupada said something very wonderful in Los Angeles. He said it twice, actually, in Los Angeles, U.S., and Miami. He said, he saw Gornitai, and he was in ecstasy, saying, so the Gornitai, he said, when you leave from the temple, do not leave them behind. Take them with you in your heart. He said, Gornitai, they don't want to stay in the temple. They want to go out and give Krishna to the whole world. They want to give the holy name. So don't leave them in the temple. Take them in your heart. No. So that is what we're doing. We are in the, uh, just like people download. No? So we're downloading Krishna into our heart by chanting, pure chanting, as pure as we can chant, by hearing Bhagavatam, by hearing Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bhagavad Gita, and all the Shastras, by associating with the Vaishnavas. No. We, by purifying our, our residence, by having uh, the deities, and by worshiping those deities with great faith and devotion. No. Then our heart will become purified. And then we'll be able to see Krishna and take Krishna everywhere with us. No. Sometimes devotees, one of the most common questions that people ask me in, especially uh, anywhere, but especially in India, no. because people have this tendency to, to, you know, the very strong tendency, I have different dharmas. No. Although Krishna says, Sarva Dharma Paricaja. No, I have my uh, Kula Dharma, my... Uh, my work dharma, my family dharma, you know, all these things. And they very, you know, they part dark, departmentalize their lives. You know. And so you departmentalize your heart. It has four chambers. So I have the, you no, know, you're not supposed to have one chamber for different dharmas. You know. You're supposed to have your heart totally, you're supposed to, Krishna, make it a, a, the whole purpose of Chit, uh, in Chaitanya Charitamrita of Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami speaking about the cl cleansing of Gundicha is, and Srila Prabhupada explained it, such a beautiful verse taking it from Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur that when Lord Chaitanya cleansed the temple, swept the temple and then to get the finest element otherwise when we sweep our hearts we want to go in and get everything. Chetudarpanam arjanam. Then Baba Mahad Vagni Nirvapanam. First you take out the gross you know, conceptions. Then you go in and take out the karmic impressions. Baba Mahad Vagni Nirvapanam. And then Shreya Kaidava Chandra Vitarana. Then some light can enter in. The moonshine from the lotus feet of the Lord. And his beautiful glance. Uh, and then Vidya Bhadu Jivanam, we can make uh, the holy name of the Lord our very life and soul, our constant companion. So I tell those devotees, uh, they say, what, what do I do when I'm working? How, how, how do, what does that have to do with Krishna? It has everything to do with Krishna. You, you're maintaining your home, you're maintaining your family so they can be Krishna conscious? No. And if you have Krishna in your heart, and you have yaj jiva gre vartate nama tu byam. You have Krishna on your tongue. Then you will always, no, you will always remember the Supreme Personality of God. So this is, uh, this is so important. And therefore Hanuman makes so much emphasis that the Lord will reveal himself when you want to. I, many times I mentioned this, that Srila Prabhupada, in New Mayapur, France, uh, he asked, he was saying, his famous saying, what is the difficulty? The prophet said, so, what is the difficulty? Why do people not want to be Krishna conscious? When he said, Maya, Prabhupada, Maya. The prophet said, no. And then another devotee said, so many uh, sense objects are attracting us. The prophet said, no. Another devotee, uh, family, friendship, society, and love in this material world. 
No. And then one devotee said, because we don't want to be Krishna conscious. That is the reason. No. There's only no other reason. So what is the difficulty? You don't want to be Krishna conscious. You have another priority in your life. No. That uh, if I just... Even Srila Prabhupada said, I also made this mistake. I was thinking, my astrologer told me I would be the wealthiest man in India. So I was thinking, I will make so much money and I will support all the Gaudiya Math. No. Otherwise, let me make money, then I can be Krishna conscious. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, he says, this is the biggest mistake you can think, that, that getting some money is the result of Krishna consciousness. It is karma. No. No, Krishna consciousness is already there. No. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem, Sadhu Kavinoi. It's already there in the heart. It is awakened by the association of the Vaishnavas. And taking advantage, of, not by the association, not you just come in the temple and there's a lot of devotees, but your mind is thinking of something else. You have to take advantage. You have to enter into the kirtan. You have to dance and chant. You have to uh, focus on the deities. No. Well, the first time I, I went to Mayapur, devotees were very young and wild. No. So, so uh, Prabhupada was on his walk, and we had this kirtan. And devotees were running from one side, no, full, full speed. They would stop, kind of slide in front of the deity. Then they would run to the other side and slide on the floor. <laughs> and Prabhupada came in. And usually Prabhupada would go up to, you know, take his darshan. But Prabhupada, that day, he went and sat on the Vyasa sign. And he said, stop. You know, the devotees thought he would, be, he would be enlivened by their kirtan. Prabhupada said, this is not dancing, this is lust. No. He said, kirtan should be performed for the pleasure of the deities. No. Not that you, as Prabhupada said, dancing is good, but it should be for the pleasure of the deity and for the pleasure of the Vaishnavas. No. Not this running back and forth. No. And then everybody, you know. And, and, and then the, when we went to Vrindavan, one devotee was singing, you know, like some devotee sing, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and Prabhupada stopped it. He said, "Stop this!" You know? And then Prabhupada said to one of his secretary, but everybody heard it. He said, "He is singing like a rakshasa, you know? <laughs> singing like a demon." You no, know? and so Prabhupada didn't like it. You know? In 1977. The devotees thought they would have a kirtan competition. So all these groups came from different parts of Bengal. Prabhupada told Jai Patakama, stop it. No, stop it. He did not like the kirtan. No, it, was not, it was not proper. Prabhupada could just hear and understand this is not the proper mood. The mood should be singing. We never see Prabhupada going, no. chanting. Also, he doesn't chant Ramo. No. If anyone ever noticed, I, I tell some devotees they're very, even though they're not Bengalis, but Prabhupada was Bengali and he didn't chant Ramo. No. So I tell the devotees, you show me one time Prabhupada chanting Ramo and I'll say, okay, you can, you, you can chant Ramo. But never. He chants the Sanskrit mantra Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. It's also not Hare Ram. No. Hari Rama, no, 32 syllables, not 28 syllables, no. no, so we have to chant the Maha Mantra properly. Of course, Prabhupada said, however you chant, Krishna will accept it. But if we know, if we hear our Acharya chanting, then we should chant like our Acharya, no. He's chanting, he's teaching us. That what does Acharya mean? He's teaching us how to chant the Maha Mantra. So if by some uh, just like in Brazil, they chant, they s pronounce things very differently. Like uh, to say Rukmini Pati, they say Hukimini Pachi. No? So they may have a difficulty chanting some syllables. No? 
just like in Latin America, when they say Jaya, they say Yaya, you know, because that's the, the letters, that's how they pronounce certain letters. But whatever, uh, once you learn how to do it properly, then we do it properly. You know. Not that uh, local customs are okay, but when we learn the proper system, just like even in, even in India, we have so many local customs, you know, different ways of doing it, just like in South India, they say Krishna, you no, know, in some places, Krishna. And so, you no, know, so that, Krishna will accept it. You know, but uh, if we, we hear Prabhupada, then we hear someone, he's coming from Goloka Vrindavan. You know, he can, he's teaching us. This is how it's done. Just like Srila Prabhupada said one time, devotees wanted him to, you know, he, he was having some, his heart attack. So they wanted to give him a diet, of brown rice, you know, uh, like all, all these integral grains, you know, no sugar, nothing. And Prabhupada said, what is this starvation diet? You know, and he said, bring me. But then another time they were giving him some things like that. Prabhupada said, bring me a sh bowl of sugar and bring me puris. You know, and he took the puri and he put it in the sugar and he ate it. And he said, all my life I have taken Krishna prasadam, meaning what is offered to the deity. And he said, and up to now I have had no problem. You know, so, of course, Prabhupada did have diabetes. You know, but, uh, so, but the point is that whatever the local custom should be, for the deity we, we offer what the deity, what, want, what, what Radharani prepares for Krishna, we prepare for Krishna. What Sita prepares for Ramachandra, we prepare for Ramachandra. You know. The deity, then, the, then you have some local cu uh, cuisine, you can offer that on the side. But always the proper offering must be there. You know. uh, so, this is Krishna consciousness. But Lord Ramachandra, he taught something very, which is the next verse, verse number five. You know. Hmm. It, it was ordained that Ravana, the chief of the Rakshasas, could not be killed by anyone but a man. And for this reason, Lord Ramachandra, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, appeared in the form of a human being. So, uh, Lord Brahma, he gave benedictions, and then the demigods came to complain. This Ravana, you've given him uh, some blessings and he's creating havoc. So many problems. And Brahma, Brahma, uh, Brahma began to think, he said, yes, but he did not ask to be protected from human beings. They're too insignificant. You know? So, uh, by Yoga Maya, you know, uh, Ravana, for, he, he omitted this. And therefore, Lord Brahma, he said, therefore, he, the Lord, we pray to the Lord to come as a man, man-like form. And then Lord Vishnu appeared. And he said, yes, I will do that. And he came as Ramachandra. But there was another reason. <clears throat> Lord Ramachandra's mission, however, was not only to kill Ravana, but also to teach mortal beings that material happiness C centered around sex life or centered around one's wife is the cause of many miseries. You know. That's Jeev Jago for uh, the Grihamedes. No. No. He came to teach, although he was feeling vipralamba bhav, he was feeling, uh, as Srila Prabhupada mentions in the purport here, he was, he was feeling. Uh, I think it's this purport. Uh, or maybe it's another one. Yes, yeah, so he says, transcendental bliss and separation, biraha. And there's somewhere else. That maybe it's the next purport. Uh, anyway, he mentions uh, uh, sattvika bhavas, all kinds of transcendental... Uh, he was feeling... So many transcendental 
emotions. So, uh, so he came to teach us you know, that uh, what is Vaishnava Char, you know, uh, the Satyag, Vaishnava, a Vaishnava Char, Sri Sangi Eka Asadu, Krishna Bhakta Ar. That these two things, especially too much attachment for the opposite sex, no. That's one kind of asadhu, no. uh, improper behavior. And the other one is Krishna abhakta, to not be a devotee of Krishna. This is worse. No. This is worse. So Lord Ramachandra came to teach this. But he was feeling transcendental emotion. But to mundane people, he saw it appeared to be over-attachment. And he showed what how much difficulty this overattachment can cause. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada in the ninth canto in his purports, he said, therefore, when, when a man travels, he should not take his wife. Especially if he's traveling on a difficult mission like Lord Ramachandra. You don't take your wife and put her into a difficult situation. No. Uh, of course, nowadays, in, in the times of, of Ramachandra, in Vedic times, the wife, you could leave the wife at home because there were family members. Now if you leave the wife at home, she may be watching television and uh, <laughs> see all kinds of improper things. No, so it may be better to take her. No. <laughs> so, no, this society we live in is so contaminated. No. So, these instructions by Hanumanji, and there are more. Uh, I just want to read one more, which is very important. Yeah, this one. Therefore, whether one is a demigod or a demon, a man or a creature other than a man, such as a beast or a bird, everyone should worship Lord Ramachandra, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who appears on this earth just like a human being. There is no need of great austerities or penances to worship the Lord, for he accepts even a small service offered by his devotee. Thus, he is satisfied, and as soon as he is satisfied, the devotee is successful. Indeed, Lord Ramachandra brought all the devotees of Ayodhya back home, back to Godhead, by Kunta. So, Srila Prabhupada in his purport, he says that Lord Chaitanya also does the same. Uh, Lord Chaitanya brings, but I was discussing this yesterday, Ram Ramachandra brought everyone from Ay Ayodhya back home, back to Godhead. Krishna liberated all the soldiers in the battle of Kurukshetra and many demons and, and, and those who came to uh, live in Vrindavan for, who were not his eternal associates. They were becoming his associates. He liberated all of them. Uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he liberated the universe in a gradual way by starting the Krishna consciousness movement. And so many devotees, Sri Naratam Das Thakur, six Goswamis, they gave the seed, the literature, and Naratam Das Thakur, he began to preach wide, widely, everywhere, everyone. And then there was some recession, uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur elaborating on the teachings of the six Goswamis, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, bringing everything into modern context, Baladevid Yabhushan, uh, elaborating uh, on the, uh, making sure that people don't misunderstand some of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's very uh, elevated sentiments. No. So, uh, Valade Vijibhushan made many commentaries on, on Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's works, also on many of Rupa Goswami's works, so that people would understand it properly. No. And then Bhaktivinoda Thakur rooted out the Sahajism 
and wrote so many books on proper Krishna consciousness. And then Gorkishore Das Babaji, uh, the seriousness of chanting the holy name. And then Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he established Krishna Conscious Society. And Srila Prabhupada took that Krishna Consciousness Society to the world. And now, as his followers, we have to liberate the world. Therefore, we have to be very strict in our Krishna Consciousness and perform it as Srila Prabhupada has indicated. Uh, not that we you know, in, in, we have a misconception of yukta vairagya, that we do things that uh, outside people are doing because we're attracted to it, no? We may do some things in our preaching that help them come, but once they come, no. Just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's giving the holy name, Krishna Prema Pradayate, he's giving it freely. And to this point of Krishna Prema. But then later he, he gives it freely. Everyone can become it. But then afterwards, what does he do? He teaches us the seriousness through his Shikshastikam. How will you chant the holy name? No. Because if you don't chant it properly, Dordaivam Idrishami Hajani Nanuraga, you will not feel the, the effect of the holy name. And therefore, what do you do? No, we, Trinadapi, Sunicha, Torori, Bhasa, Hishnuna, Mani, Na, Mani, Dena. We have these four cardinal principles to govern the heart so that our Krishna consciousness prospers. And then to support those, Nadana, Na, Janna, Na, Sundari, Na, Kavita. No, no fruitive activities. No, don't be attached to wealth. Sometimes, just like now in, in many of our temples, we have wealth. But we understand this is Krishna's opulence. I'm just a servant. I'm just cleaning the floor. No, I'm just doing some service to the deity. I'm preaching. This wealth is for the glorification of Krishna. It has nothing to do with me. No. And Jana, some people may bow down. We get some position. Some people may bow down. But they are bowing to Krishna in the heart. No. Not to me. As Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur would say, every time someone offered obeisances, Dasushmi, I am your servant. This was his mentality. No. We should be our mentality. And Nasundari, even though we may be married, uh, we're not att attracted, we're attracted to the, the wife or husband as a Vaishnava, not as a man or a woman. We go beyond seeing this. I always tell people when they get married, they ask for blessings. I say the best blessing is that you see her as the object of your service and she sees you as the object of your If you both have this mentality, you will have a very wonderful marriage. No. Otherwise, it will be very difficult. No. If you see this is my servant, now I've got a servant. No. And I will I'll conclude with this. Gorkishore Das Babaji, one man who was just getting married, he said, so Babaji Maharaj, please give your blessings for my marriage. He said, yes, I give my blessing. You cook for her. You wash her clothes. No. He was thinking, I'm getting a servant. No. And no, he said, no, 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 no. You're the servant. Then you, that will be the blessing. You want a blessing for a good marriage. You be a Vaishnava. No, don't be an enjoyer and a controller. Be a Vaishnava. And then everything will be successful. So the Lord Ramachandra came to give that example of a perfect being, even in this world, even in our normal, ordinary activities, to be a perfect being, to have a faithful wife and be a faithful husband and always concerned about my wife's welfare, and she's always concerned about his welfare, and always upholding the principles of Dharma. That's what he showed us. So these are some thoughts on this particular section of the Bhagavatam. Any comments or questions? 
Yes. I just have to put in my artificial Thanks ears. Thanks, Maharaj. So my I can voice hear is Maharaj, you mentioned in the lecture that it has to kick in. Okay. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, my voice is sent to you. Maharaj, you mentioned in the lecture that we should not use cheap means to attract common masses and uh, there should be a distinction. But uh, when we see that uh, in the Shastras, every principle have details and every details can have principles. So what's the parameter or how should we know that we should adjust to that limit only? What's the parameter that we can adjust the principle to that limit only? That's why we associate with the Vaishnava. We associate with devotees who are more advanced because the qualities of a Vaishnava, in one sense, they're abstract. You know? Just like if I say humility, how can it's abstract until you see it manifested in someone? You know? Otherwise, it's just a concept. I can have some idea, of, but when I see a, a humble devotee, then so when we associate with the Vaishnavas, the Vaishnav qualities become manifest. We can see them and we can see how they are uh, demonstrated and how they are acted upon practically. So therefore, uh, there's so much teaching in Shastra, there's so many instructions and we should hear them. And then with, by associating with very serious devotees, we can see how to apply them in our lives. So just by hearing Shastra without, therefore it says Guru Shastra Sadhu. No. You associate with the Sadhus, you hear from the spiritual master how to apply Shastra. No. One Vaishnava, one of Prabhupada's God brothers, he said Shastra is like the map and the Guru is no, who knows how to read the map. No. Would you go this way? Just like we read the Bhagavatam, it, tell, it may tell us that we should dress in tree bark, no. but that's not very practical for nowadays. No. So the Guru will, will apply things from the Bhagavatam that are relevant to our spiritual advancement and different phases of our advancement. Just like some parts of the Bhagavatam, like <clears throat> chapters 29 to 33 of 10th Canto, they're meant to be meditated upon when we're actually in a very advanced stage of Krishna consciousness. And so, uh, first and second canto, the, if we, when we're new in Krishna consciousness, new means first 20 years. No, that's new. No, not like I've been around for six months or a year and I'm a old. Then we get the older devotee syndrome. No, that now I'm an older devotee. I don't have to offer obeisances to anyone. No, everyone should recognize me. No, the ghee lamp should come to me first. <laughs> no. Everyone will know who I am. No. So, no, we have to avoid this. No. And uh, we should always think that I am not even a Vaishnava. No. But by the mercy of the Vaishnavas, I'm getting the opportunity to at least act like a Vaishnava. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the second chapter of Madhya Lila, he tells Ramananda Roy and uh, Swarup Damodar, everything you've seen about me is just an act. I am, I'm simply performing some theatricals uh, that seems to be like pure devotion. But the fact that I'm breathing and maintaining this body, because if I had pure love for Krishna, I could not stay in this material body. If I really had Krishna Prema to the highest degree, I could not live in this body and just breathe like an ordinary person. Therefore, you should understand it's all pre pretense. No, it's not real. So he's teaching us no, that we should see. If I'm attached to material things, if I'm attached to material sentiments, then where is my Krishna consciousness? No. What have I... What have I been doing for the last X amount of years or days or months? No. If I'm attached to these things. No. So then, you know, if we meditate this way, just like if you get sick, you go to the doctor. No. And you don't go to the doctor and then he says, oh, uh, you shouldn't eat this and that. Oh, I feel better. 
no? Uh, no. So we don't go to Shastra, we don't go to the Guru, and then when he gives some instruction, oh, no, I'm okay now. No. I was feeling a little dis distressed, but now I'm okay. Because otherwise, how will I satisfy my material desires? No. I, one, one place I, I go to, I used to come, and people would immediately write me a letter. I'm, I'm chanting my 16 rounds following the principles. Otherwise, you know, don't ask me about anything else. Otherwise, you'll interfere with my sense gratification. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They made sure I knew, okay, they're okay. I'm okay. No, no problem with me. So, so, we should be sincere and just try to serve the Vaishnavas and associate with them. And then we will do every, then we will know, we will have the vigyan, the understanding how to be Krishna conscious. Hi, Krishna. Any other question, comment? Yes. How do you go? Thank you, Maharaj, for such a wonderful class. <coughs> Maybe my question is not connected with the verses, but I still want to ask about book distribution. We know it's about your background. Shall Prabhupada give you instruction for staying in Mexico and distribute their books? And my question is how to be fixed in uh, book distribution and maybe can you share us some your favorite story, Sankirtan story. How to what? To be fixed in the book distribution. Ah. Ben, the same thing? Chanting seriously and associating with the Vaishnavas. No. That's how we become fixed in anything. No. Uh, as Rupa Goswami says, that Shushushaya, <coughs> that Vajabhigyan, uh, uh, that we associate with, with superior Vaishnavas, you know, who are uh, ananyam, you know, they are free from all things. And <coughs> what is it? Anya uh, Nindadi, you no. Know, uh, Anyanindadi shunya ridam, and their heart is free from criticism and envy and blasphemy. You know. We associate with those devotees, and then we become free from everything. But actually, the answer in, to all the how to questions is chant the holy name without offenses. You know. All the how to questions will be answered. You know. If we just, that's why we are here. You know, uh, and that's why we, we go to kirtan is especially important for learning how to chant without offenses. Because in kirtan, we get the potency of everyone's chanting. You know, when we're chanting japa, then I'm limited to my own level of realization. But when we participate in the kirtan enthusiastically, one, one time Srila Prabhupada said that if you simply dance, very enthusiastically, Krishna consciousness will manifest in your heart. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said something similar. He said, one should dance in glorification of the Lord. This will bring the Lord's mercy. So, uh, we want to, you know, we just take up the association and we do our very best to chant sincerely. And then Krishna consciousness will become manifest. Hare Krishna. So, thank you all very much for your kind attention and for giving me some service. No. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Shri Sitaram Lakshman Hanuman ki jai. Shri Shri Rukmini Dwarkadesh, Shri Jagannath Baladevi Subhadra Devi, Shri Shri Gornitai Ki Jai, Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vindi Ki Jai, Nitai Gaur Premanandi. Hari Hari Bol. His Holiness Guru Prasad Swami Maharaj Ji Ki Jai. Let us pay our gratitude to Maharaj for such a wonderful class by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Shri Madhav Bhagavatam Ki Jai 
आने वाली राम नवमी महा महोत्सव की जाए इस कौन रोहिणी ग्रैंड ओपनिंग की जाए जाए गुरु प्रसाद स्वामी महाराज जी की जाए जगत गुरु श्री रुपाद की जाए धान धाई गौर प्रेमानंद हरि हरि वो कृष्ण प्रसाद की जाए